A new season for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone means a new update, and that also means new gameplay changes. Today, we're running down a various number of things, some larger ticket things that I feel we didn't quite get to touch on too much with the blog reveal, some unmentioned stuff, some confirmed changes, but also some things like some fixes and adjustments to the game that are much needed. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below, drop a like if you enjoy the video, and subscribe for more Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone coverage as we round into Season 2 here. A lot upcoming, so I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage, because right now, for a a very limited time like i think until tomorrow night only the augment frames are 75 percent off and with code espresso it's 85 percent off genuinely one of the biggest discounts they've ever had for a pair of their glasses but more on that a little later for now let's take a look at the season two changes coming with this next update that you should be on the lookout for Firstly, let's start with multiplayer here. In the gameplay related sense, let's talk about some features or really one in particular because we mentioned it in the blog post, but because there was so much we had to get to, we didn't really get to break down too much of it. That being the ninja vest. This is a new vest that comes along as your sort of basis for how you wanna play the game, but it comes along with a tactical, a lethal and a field upgrade slot and the gear slots of gloves, boots and gear. But the bonuses of this or what it rather does as its advantage is that it eliminates footstep sounds. It's immune to movement reduction effects, and if you take either of them, you get a bonus shuriken or throwing knife and the ability to resupply that shuriken and throwing knife every 25 seconds. So kind of getting resupply on those two specific things. Now, of course, duplicate effects do not stack. And if equipped with covert sneakers, you're going to end up gaining the ability of running sneakers by default. So just giving you a sneaker set that makes sure that you don't double up on the same genuine effect. But this is a new gameplay feature that I think will allow for use for a lot of different play styles that people will enjoy it. I honestly might start to main this because you can use things like your lightweight boots, your tactical pads, all because you don't have to sacrifice that boot slot for that covert sneaker, for those silent footsteps. Having the ability to have that defaulted while also being able to, say, increase that attack sprint, which I love to do, or that overall movement speed of the lightweight boots, that is huge. That was one of the big reasons why I didn't ever really like to run Dead Silence or covert sneakers in the first place. So now having the ability for both of those, that's gonna be pretty big. But anyways, beyond that, let's talk about some gameplay fixes for multiplayer, because truthfully, there's not been a whole ton of gameplay altering features that have been mentioned officially just yet. But on the fixes side of things, changes coming with this next update, we know of a few things already with a fix scheduled, meaning that Sledgehammer has acknowledged this and said that there is something that is going to be coming with this next update over on their Trello board. Firstly, the Stormender not interacting with certain streaks is apparently going to have a fix here for it. For those that don't realize, sometimes the Stormender just does not take out streaks as it's supposed to do. There are further fixes for the XRK Stalker no stock. There's another fix for the Field of View bug inbound and fixes for issues with the Kimbo in zombies. Now they did also mention there are going to be investigated fixes through the Trello board, including ranked play issues of the time stat not being properly tracked in the CDL hardpoint scoreboard and loadout restrictions not actually restricting certain items at some points. And in zombies, some camo challenges are not tracking properly, along with Act 3 being unable to be completed with the story mission in some certain instances, and players have reported losing their content of their acquisition stashes following an X fill that should have a fix as well. Now, realistically, when you take a look at things that have been reported here, that's not a whole ton of stuff in the grand scheme of things, but that's where we can turn to hopeful changes here with this, because a lot of things sort from the community Trello board, something managed by Chad of Duty, a great dude within the community that has set up a Trello board by the community for the community that has a ton of issues visible. Fingers crossed, this gets seen by the devs as well, because I'll be totally honest with you, the Trello boards are not kept up with nearly as much as I think they should be by Sledgehammer and Raven. So anyways, additional things that have been seen in the community are glitch spots, both intentional and unintentional. Sometimes spawns will have glitch spots where it puts you outside of the map or something. And then there's also additional out of bounds exploits that are out there. There's an issue that still persists where players will be kicked for inactivity, even if they're moving. I've had that happen to me before as well. Some streak UI persists after exiting or dying in them. There's general UI issues. And lastly, one that I personally had, there's an infinite wrench bug in war. Not sure what caused this entirely, but whenever I set up a barricade, I came out of that and could not bring any of my guns up until I died, but I was just like in air, just wrenching something that wasn't there for a long time. So kind of comical, but something that's obviously still should not happen. But that's the multiplayer stuff that we know about in regards to coming changes, features, and other things. But let's jump over to Warzone because there are a few things that are actually pretty cool. Firstly, starting with some unmentioned additions here to the quality of life and gameplay. 
we ended up seeing from some of the gameplay that was sourced and posted by those that went to Treyarch to play Fortune's Keep and Resurgence Ranked the day or two before the blog post and when Season 2 was revealed, that the gameplay build they had, which is going to be the launch build, assumedly for Season 2, that build had a couple of things in it. Firstly, that Precision Airstrike notification that Raven teased a week or two ago. That is apparently present with this Season 2 build, which is definitely cool. Gives you that heads up if you are in that range of it. Certainly love that, both in the enemy and friendly category. But also, there was another thing that there is a red ring on the minimap to indicate if a UAV is active and if you are in that radius of the UAV. So giving you just a little heads up, they recently added a AO back to it saying enemy UAV inbound or something like that. But now to have that actually on a visible thing that if you didn't hear that audio cue, you'll have that information that, oh, maybe I'm a little bit out in the open here. Maybe I'm in a vulnerable position. So that just gives you extra help and definitely is a nice thing to see, I think. And then on Fortune's Keep, there was the ability to flood certain areas as shown off in the trailer. But that's the features that we've seen again publicly that we haven't really quite been able to talk about. In terms of Trello and fixes, well, so far, there's nothing that's been detailed as a fix scheduled. Everything is listed as investigating because as far as I can tell, the board has not been moderated or updated since January 19th. So it's very possible that some of these have fixes, maybe all of them, or maybe vice versa, and maybe none of them have fixes or only some of them have fixes. But anyways, perk packages not equipping properly has been mentioned and officially stated by Raven. This was there post season one reloaded. There was that workaround here that I don't know if that was ever fixed out, but the issue was that the perk packages were equipping the class next to or after whatever you selected. So if you collect so if you selected your creator class slot number one, it will give you the perks on the creator class slot number two. So that should have a fix here coming. The map distortion, you know, that giant rift in the hillside between Levin Resort and Popov Power, where it's like a straight up earthquake happened and the tectonic plates shifted. There's a giant fault line. Yeah, that should be going away. Obviously, that was never meant to be there. Issues with the senders are still persisting that should have some fixes and inconsistencies with armor plates as well still persist. So again, those have all been listed as investigating, but whether or not they're all fixed, some are fixed or none are fixed, we don't quite know just yet. Then community reports, again, coming back to Chad's Trello board, players can spawn under the map when releasing from the Gulag. That's been something that's been an issue since season one reloaded as well. There should hopefully be a fix here for that. K-Ban players or keyboard and mouse players are sometimes forced into a standing position after initiating a revive in a prone stance. Footstep audio and occlusion still needs work, but occlusion in particular not working properly through some surfaces is something that's come up recently. Hit detection being buggy on the train. That's been persistent since season one launched as well, but that should, fingers crossed, have some adjustments to it. But that's it. That is the changes we know about within Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone and what you should hopefully be on the lookout for here within Season 2's update coming this upcoming week. Now, before we wrap everything up again, I do want to touch on one more time that deal that Gamer Advantage is running. This, again, for the next 24 to like 36 hours, depending on when you see this video, when it is published. But for those of you that know, I've been working with these guys for like three years now, and I'm not kidding. I think this is the best deal they've had to date in that three-year span. The Augment Frames are one of my two regular pairs that I end up using. I'll switch back and forth between two pairs regularly. So I love them to death in terms of comfort, and right now they have a 75% off site-wide discount on those Augment Frames, but again, only for tonight. And through tomorrow. But with code ESPRESSO, you can also get an extra 10% off that, making them 85% off, as low as like $15 to $25, I think, if you use code ESPRESSO or not. They've got a handful of other last call items that are great as well when discounted. So lots of options, but again, this is a limited time mega sale. So just want to let you guys know about that if you guys are at all interested. At the very least, I'd recommend checking out their website. They can better detail all the science, all the breakdowns of everything, way better than I ever could. But to me, they are the most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames that I've used. So if you guys want to check it out, link in the description below. And again, make sure to use code ESPRESSO, especially if you're picking up those augment frames for up to 85% off. But anyways, that's now what we're going to call it. So let me your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of these changes? Like some of what we see, dislike some of what we see, whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content like X Defiant and other games out there. I'd love to have in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.